Hey guys and welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about the anatomy of gluteal region and posterior thigh. So to start talking about the gluteal region, we need to understand the bones that make up your uh, lower limbs. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and watch at the um, look at the gluteal surface and see the structures on that region. So basically, you guys, as you know that your pelvis is basically um, made up of your two hip bones and sacrum. Now, what concerns me is the hip bone and the hip bone is basically made by your ilium, your pubic and ischium down. So the uh, ilium, which is your hip in Latin, the pubic, which refers to the genital area, and your ischium is your seat bone. So with knowing the uh, meaning of the three bones, you will be able to hold your bone in the anatomically correct position. Now, if you look at the hip bone, you will find that you, um, or sorry, let's say, yeah, yeah your hip bone, not pelvis, uh, you will find that you have your ilium above, you have your pubic referring to the genital area and um, uh, anterior medially and then you will find the ischium um, um, uh, facing downwards which is your seat bone. Now what are the important things we need to see in the uh, ilium, the pubic and ischium? If you look at the ilium you will find that you have two surfaces. You have outside surface which is this one it's exactly uh, the same surface of your acetabulum because you know that your uh, thigh bone is here and the head of femur is going to get into the acetabulum. So this is lateral surface. So the lateral surface, guys, or the outer surface is basically the gluteal uh, surface. So the gluteal surface is going to show you ridges. You're going to have gluteal lines and these gluteal lines are going to give you a reference for the origin of the gluteal muscles. So you will find a small posterior gluteal line here. If you look at the iliac crest here, you will find near to the posterior part, you have the posterior gluteal line followed by anterior gluteal line and then you have inferior gluteal line. Why these gluteal lines are important? Because the gluteus maximus is going to take its origin from the iliac crest posterior to the posterior gluteal line from parts of the sacrum and the thoracolumbar fascia and then this is for the gluteus maximus it's the biggest one that comes outside here and then the medius is going to take its origin from the gluteal surface between the posterior and middle gluteal line and then the gluteus minimus is going to take its origin from the gluteal surface also but between the anterior anterior and the inferior gluteal lines all right so these are very important and it makes sense because your gluteus muscle uh, in the gluteal region is outside and that is all coming from the gluteal surface of ilium now if you look at the other surface of ilium you're going to find a smooth surface for the iliacus muscle and it's a smooth because the iliacus muscle is basically um, uh, lining this uh, surface here and it goes all the way with the psoas major to get attached to the femur down here here, and that is going to do hip flexion and we're going to talk about those muscles in the anterior thigh and the hip flexors later on in the next videos. Now if this is the iliacus and this is the smooth surface and this is the outside uh, uh, rough surface that has those lines, this is going to be your iliac crest above. Now if you look at the rest of the iliac bone, you will find spines, elevated areas. You have two anterior spines, two posterior spines. Uh, uh, two posterior spines so the anterior spines would be one above one below so we call it anterior superior iliac spine and the one below is what we call the anterior inferior iliac spine and posteriorly you have two spines the posterior superior iliac spine and the posterior inferior iliac spine and uh, uh, the ASIS and the uh, uh, AIIS all right um, these are very important landmarks uh, that will get very big it's going to be very important in orthopedic clinics uh, make sure just you know how to touch the ASIS it's very prominent in, in your body uh, if you're thin and um, even if you're not thin you can still palpate for this bone um, all right and that's gonna give you a very important attachment to muscles in the anterior thigh compartment and we're going to talk about the ASIS and the AIIS um, in the next videos in the anterior thigh muscles all right so this is going to give you a muscle and this is going to give you a muscle 
so what concerns me now is, uh, so this is regarding the ileum, and let's move on to the ischium. The ischium has an ischial tuberosity, which is a rough surface here, and that gives attachment to muscles on the posterior thigh, and it also makes sense because <clears throat> those muscles who are coming out from the ischial tuberosity and going to the thigh, they will help me to move the thigh posteriorly. All right, so this is the, the because, because if you guys want to think about the bones, if you find a bone that is coming from the ischial tuberosity and going to the posterior thigh, it's definitely going to do hip extension. If you find a muscle coming from the pubic bone and going to the femur, it's going to do hip adduction and we're going to talk about the adductors in the next videos all right so you, you just need to think about this muscle coming from where to where and of course if you want to work on the hip you need to hip joint you need to have your origin coming from the uh, hip bone and you need to get attached to the uh, femur okay so everything makes sense you just need to orient yourself and understand where the bone is and that will give you a hint about the origin and insertion but we're not going to talk about those guys today we're just going to talk about the gluteal muscles and the posterior thigh compartment now moving on to the pupus you have your pubic bone the pubic bone has a ramus superiorly and a ramus inferiorly and it has a body and that body has a prominence and that prominence we call it the tup pubic tubercle. So you have the pubic body, the body has a tubercle and it has a crest and you have superiorly here if you look at the pubic bone you find superiorly superior pubic ramus, inferiorly you have inferior pubic ramus, the very prominent part is the pubic tubercle, this is your pubic body and down here you have your ischium and the ischium is going to also send a ramus and that ramus will get attached with the ramus of pubic and we call it the ischio pubic ramus so if you guys look at the yellow color this is the ischial ramus the green is your uh, sorry the yellow is your um, pubic ramus because this is anterior and this is the rough surface for attachment of the sacrum this is your iliac spine asis aiis so this is anterior and this is posterior so this is pubic bone and this is ischial bone so the pubic bone will send uh, uh, pubic inferior pubic ramus and the ischium will send inferior ischial ramus together they will do what we call the ischio pubic ramus and the most important things I want you to know about the ischial bone uh, is its body of course it has uh, superior and inferior rami um, but the most important thing I want you to guys is the ischial tuberosity because that will give us uh, the origin of the hamstrings muscle, the muscles of the posterior thigh that will help you in hip extension but mainly knee flexion, all right, and the ischial spine. So if you look at the ischial spine, this concerns me a lot now because that now we will move on from the bone to talk about ligaments and this spine is attached to important ligaments and we're going to talk about that as we proceed so we talked about the ilium and what do we have in the gluteal surface we talked about the uh the, the smooth uh, pelvic surface that has the iliacus we talked about the iliac spines we talked about the pubic and the, the pubic bone with its important uh, uh, remi to remi and the tubercle and the crest in the body and then we talked about the ischium with its, with, with its remi and the most important thing in ischium is the ischial spine and the ischial tuberosity which is the part that is basically uh, uh, um, facing downward and this is going to harm uh, very thin people if they are sitting because it's a bony prominence if it's not cushioned with enough fat it's gonna harm you if you are sitting in upright um, extended back position all right uh, now why the ischial spine is important to me because you guys we have ligaments and the most important ligaments we have today is the, the, the ligaments that are coming from the sacrum and those ligaments one of them will go to the ischial spine and one will go to the ischial tuberosity so what do you think we can call them we can call them the sacrospinous ligament and the sacrotuberous ligaments all right why they are important because if you guys look at your uh, hip uh, bone you will find that the ischial spine is basically above that you have a depression we call it the greater sciatic notch and we have a smaller depression down we call it lesser sciatic notch so if you have ligament attached to the spine you are going to convert the notches into foramina and why do we need to convert it into foramina all right we're gonna uh, convert it into foramina because we need them 
for the the uh, passage of important structures so if i have blood vessels coming from my core because you guys know the blood will come your abdominal aorta is gonna come all the way until it reaches l4 and then it will give you common iliacs and then the common iliac will give you external iliac that pass outside the inguinal ligament to give you femoral and we're going to talk about that later on and it will give you internal iliac inside and internal iliac takes care of your pelvis so once you have internal iliac that gives everything in the pelvis of course this is the main sources i have now what about the gluteal region the gluteal region needs to have blood supply so thanks to the greater sciatic foramen that will give me the exit uh, way to the people who want to read the, reach the, glute, the gluteal region and thanks to the lesser sciatic foramen who is gonna give you give me an entrance way to the perineal region because you guys know that we have the pelvis and we have down the perineum and we have a diaphragm that separates them and diaphragm in latin means a uh, separator and we have it when we have something that separates two cavities so here you have the pelvic cavity and here you have the perineum and with the pelvic diaphragm you are separating them so what about the blood supply and nerves structures needs to come into the perineum okay great so I have blood vessels that will come out from the greater sciatic foramen whoever wants to go to the gluteal region will be outside whoever wants to continue the journey to the posterior thigh will also come out without any return but whoever wants to come back to the perineal it will exit from the greater sciatic foramen it will enter back from the lesser sciatic foramen to reach the perineal region and supply structure in perineum so you guys need to know the greater sciatic foramen the lesser sciatic foramen and the structures that pass through them you need to know that the greater sciatic foramen is greater because it makes passageway for a lot of structures anyone wants to come out of the pelvis it will come out from that of course except for the obturator because you have obturator foramen that gives you passageway for or, or let's be specific the obturator canal after we seal off the foramen by the obturator membrane that will give you the passageway for the obturator uh, nerve and vessels all right other than that uh, people who wants to reach the gluteal region they need to come out from the greater sciatic foramen whoever wants to come back here to the perineal area they need to enter back through the uh, lesser sciatic foramen okay so we're going to talk about that as we proceed this is uh, how it's important to know that the sacrospinous ligament and the sacrotuberous ligament converted the sciatic for, uh, 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 notches into foramina and the greater one will be for the exit of structures uh, entrance for whoever wants to reach the perineum will be through the lesser sciatic foramen all right guys other than that we have other ligaments if i have a ligament that is connecting the um the uh, sacrum to the ilium i call it the uh, sacroiliac uh, ligament anterior and posterior and uh, uh, that is the sacroiliac joint all right so the sacroiliac joint is between the the sacrum and ilium but this is not um, uh, related to this topic today uh, that is explained in the uh, pelvis of reproductive module. I just need to proceed now with the uh, lower limbs. 